Hello, good to see you. Pastor Sam with a devotion from Exodus 8 and 9. We are going to look at the middle three plagues, the fourth, fifth, and sixth plagues. We're kind of in round two. Uh, we're going to hear a lot of the same things that we heard last time with the first three plagues. Uh, different plagues, obviously, but uh, we're seeing some themes developing. We're going to note a shift today in the hardening of Pharaoh's heart. That's something we've been been paying attention to, and and we're going to see a change happen uh, with that. So let's get into it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we are going to read, uh, this is a little bit, it's not a shorter section, but I just, there's, there's really nothing that I can leave out today. It's all just good stuff. So we're going to read through, and then we're going to come back and comment on it. So we're in uh, Exodus chapter 8, starting at verse 20. Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning and present yourself to Pharaoh as he goes out to the water and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Or else, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and your servants and your people and into your houses. And the houses of the Egyptians shall be filled with swarms of flies, and also the ground on which they stand. But on that day I will set apart the land of Goshen, where my people dwell, so that no swarms of flies shall be there, that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. Thus I will put a division between my people and your people. Tomorrow this sign shall happen. And the Lord did so. There came great swarms of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses. Throughout all the land of Egypt, the land was ruined by the swarms of flies. Then Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said, Go, sacrifice to your God within the land. But Moses said, It would not be right to do so, for the offerings we shall sacrifice to the Lord our God are an abomination to the Egyptians. If we sacrifice offerings abominable to the Egyptians before their eyes, Will they not stone us? We must go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he tells us. So Pharaoh said, I will let you go sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, only you must not go very far away. Plead for me. Then Moses said, Behold, I am going out from you, and I will plead with the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants and from his people, tomorrow. Only let not Pharaoh cheat again by not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord. And the Lord did as Moses asked, and removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. Not one remained. But Pharaoh hardened his heart this time also, and did not let the people go. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go and still hold them, behold, the hand of the Lord will fall with a very severe plague upon your livestock that are in the field, the horses, the donkeys, the camels, the herds, and the flocks. But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, so that nothing of all that belongs to the people of Israel shall die. And the Lord set a time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord will do this thing in the land. And the next day the Lord did this thing. All the livestock of the Egyptians died, but not one of the livestock of the people of Israel died. And Pharaoh sent, and behold, not one of the livestock of Israel was dead. But the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take handfuls of soot from the kiln, and let Moses throw them in the air in the sight of Pharaoh. It shall become fine dust over all the land of Egypt, and become boils, breaking out in sores on man and beast throughout all the land of Egypt. So they took soot from the kiln and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses threw it in the air, and it became boils, breaking out in sores on man and beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boils came upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. But the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he did not listen to them, as the Lord had spoken to Moses. Okay, Uh, let's go back to where we started here. So the the plagues are fairly literarily divided into three groups of three. And we see that 
uh, the first, fourth, and seventh plague, we'll see that next time as well, have a very long section. Uh, so what is it? From verse 20 to verse 32, the fourth plague takes, you know, 12 verses. Uh, the fifth plague takes seven verses, and then the sixth plague takes four verses, five verses. Uh, so just the way that the um, plagues are structured sort of breaks them up into groups of three. And that's kind of why we're looking at them in groups of three. And then the tenth plague is uh, entirely set apart. It, it's kind of its own unique thing. But anyway, we get, we get some repetition hearkening back to the first plague. Rise up early in the morning, present yourself to Pharaoh as he goes out to the water, which is how we started plague one, turning the water into blood. So I wonder if Pharaoh's like, oh boy, here we go again. But, but it's not, oh boy, here we, there's a little, here we go again. Thus says the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. There's that, let my people go phrase. Uh, now what's different about these three plagues is that the Lord says, I will set apart the land of Goshen where my people dwell so that no swarms of flies may be there. So we get with the first three plagues, it happened to all Egypt, to the land of the Egyptians and to the land of the Israelites, all alike. And so Pharaoh may be coming to the conclusion that this is just some freak event, right? Um, they worship a whole bunch of different gods, and so maybe Pharaoh's like, well, God X was angry because we didn't do this thing, and so he just did whatever to everybody. And so Pharaoh might be kind of misinterpreting or searching for some kind of explanation within his framework to be able to account for these events. These next three plagues, plagues four, five, and six, are, are kind of looking at that, uh, that potential explanation and trying to tear it down. Because now what's going to happen is plagues four, five, and six happen just to the Egyptians. And they don't happen at all to the Israelites. So if Pharaoh's on that track, he's got to come to the conclusion that just us Egyptians are doing something wrong. And that our Egyptian gods are punishing us Egyptians because we did something wrong. And they're not punishing the Israelites who must have done something right. Or Pharaoh's like, well, maybe this God guy is actually the one in charge, which is eventually sort of where he'll get. He never actually really gets there. Um, at least we don't know. But there's this distinction in plagues four, five, and six that I believe will continue in seven, eight, and nine. I believe. We'll have to look at that next time. Plague 10 happens to everyone, except there's some preparation beforehand. So Plague 10 kind of comes back to where we started with 1, 2, and 3. Although the people who prepared were saved. But anyway, we'll look at that when we get to it. Uh, again, why does God make the distinction? That you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. All of these plagues, these 10 signs, are being performed so that the Egyptians may know that he is the Lord and so that Pharaoh specifically will know who is Yahweh. This is all going back to Pharaoh's initial question when Moses comes and he says, let us go that we may serve Yahweh in the wilderness. And Pharaoh says, who is Yahweh? I do not know. That would be the Lord. When you see L-O-R-D in all capitals there, that's, that's the divine name. Yahweh. I do not know Yahweh. So God says, okay, if you don't know me, I am going to, I am going to introduce myself. Uh, and God is making quite the first impression on Pharaoh. Okay. Now, we're, we're seeing, we're, we're noticing, uh, we've been noticing the hardness of Pharaoh's heart. And today we'll mark the shift for the first five plagues Pharaoh is the subject of the hardening. Starting with plague six, we're going to notice that God is hardening his heart. So Pharaoh's got this kind of bargaining 
with God. He says, go sacrifice to your God within the land. He's taking what God has said, but he still wants to be in charge of it, which is not really listening to God, right? God doesn't give us something, like one of the commandments, for example, and say, you can modify this as you see fit, right? This is a guideline, and you can kind of do more or less. That's, that's not how God works. He doesn't tell us to do a thing and give us a whole bunch of leeway in the middle. Now, God does give us leeway on some things, right? But like the commandments, which we're going to get to in uh, chapter 20, 24, later on. Uh, there's no leeway with the commandments. You, you do the thing or you don't do the thing, right? Uh, Pharaoh wants to still be in charge. So he's taking what God says to him and he's putting his own constraints on it. Go, sacrifice to your God within the land. Next, next plague, we're going to see, he'll say, go, but don't go very far. Okay. So Pharaoh still wants to be the one in charge. And that's, that's the problem. Right? The problem is that he wants to sort of do what God is saying. He's like kind of listening to God, half listening to God, but still wanting to put his own spin on it. Half listening to God is not listening to God. We can't get halfway saved. We can't believe in Jesus as our Savior and not believe that he rose from the dead or not believe that he actually died on the cross, right? We, we can't have half of a faith. This, such a faith is not really faith at all. There's no half faith. You either have faith or you don't have. You believe the whole word of God or really you shouldn't believe any of it. If you don't believe the whole word of God, you really shouldn't believe any of it because you're doing, such, such a person is doing the same kind of thing that Pharaoh is doing, taking God's word and then putting their own personal constraints upon the word of God. Well, here's what I'm going to allow. Here's what I'm going to believe. Here's what I'm going to think God is actually saying. You, we, we take the whole thing or nothing. So it's, it's not, we don't see Pharaoh as, well, he's trying to meet God halfway. We, we don't see that. This, this is not an encouraging statement is what I'm trying to say. Where, where Pharaoh's putting these distinctions and he's like, well, he's trying to work with God. We, we, we don't work with God. This is not a partnership. Um, God tells us how things are going to work. Because he's God. And we're not. So Pharaoh, until Pharaoh goes all the way to God, he's, he's nowhere. Right? All, all of this intermediate talk is, is really worthless. Anyway, he doesn't let them go. Uh, Pharaoh hardened his heart this time. He didn't, let, he didn't even let the people go a teensy bit. Right? Only let Pharaoh not cheat again by not letting the people go. Moses, Moses, you know, you know what's happening. Called it. But Pharaoh hardened his heart. Pharaoh hardened his heart. Now notice. Now, this is the fourth plague, but it's the fifth time that Pharaoh hardened his heart. Because when Moses and Aaron first came to him before there were any plagues, and Moses showed him the signs, throwing down the staff, letting it turn into a snake, that, that's kind of the introduction. That's sort of plague zero. We can maybe think about it. Pharaoh hardened his heart that time also. So Pharaoh will actually be in the majority of times hardening his heart. We'll get to that in the next play because zero through five, zero, one, two, three, four, five is six times. And then six, seven, eight, nine, ten is five times. Although I don't actually think he hardens his heart after the tenth plague. So it's, it's really four times. Pharaoh hardens his heart six times. God hardens Pharaoh's heart four times. Well, actually, when he pursues them at the Red Sea, I think God hardens his heart. But, but either way, we have, at worst, an even distribution of the heart. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show that God eventually gives Pharaoh what Pharaoh says he wants. I'm trying to help us to hear the hardening uh, the way that the, the way that it's presented 
in the text uh, to hear it as confirmation of, of what Pharaoh has chosen, which is what it is, first of all, and what God does. God's, God, God reaches a point in our lives. Now, we don't know where this point is, which kind of makes it you're either in dangerous territory or you're not in dangerous territory. Uh, we, could, we could look to any of the eschatological parables of Jesus. That would be the end times parables of Jesus, like in the last 20% of the Gospels, well, the Matthew, Mark, and Luke, when Jesus is telling his uh, end times parables. Anyway, let me make my point. There's two groups, the people in the party and the people out of the party, the people who are ready and the people who are not ready. There's, there's no middle ground in this. Um, in those parables, God gives to the people what they said they want and then rewards them according to what they have wanted and received. So the people who are ready for the wedding get to go into the wedding. The people who are not ready, for whatever reason, didn't want to be ready, and they kind of get what's coming. To, Pharaoh gets what he says he wants. He just maybe doesn't realize all of what he said that he wanted. Okay, plague five. Um, we got a plague of livestock. All the livestock die, but nothing of all that belongs to the people of Israel shall die. So we get that same distinction. Pharaoh sent, and behold, not one of the livestock of Israel was dead, but the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. He did not let the people go. And this, this is sort of the middle uh, hardening passage where next time, plague six, we're going to see God doing it. But Pharaoh has made it very clear. So he's had six times now where Moses has come to him and said, this is what God says, let the people go. And Pharaoh says, no, I'm not going to listen to God. Six times, six times. For Pharaoh, times six was the magic number. Now, I don't know what it's going to be for anybody else. That's one of those hidden mysteries of God, how, how long God delays until finally he gives us, he gives a person what that person has said they want. Right? God, God eventually will do that. God's like, okay, you didn't want anything to do with me in this life? Fine. You don't have to have anything to do with me forever. Uh, it, it's not exactly a Bible passage, but the door to hell is locked on the inside. People, people who don't want anything to do with God get their desire for all eternity. And the, I don't think there are actual doors or locks in hell, but just that's, that's the thinking that these people have rebelled against God, have chosen their own personal freedom for their entire lives. They get into hell and they kind of lock the door on the inside and they're like, I made it. I'm my own boss for all eternity. I don't have to listen to God. And well, I, again, I don't think there are doors or locks, but, but that's the kind of thinking that I'm, I'm the one in charge. And so I don't want to be with God because he makes me listen to him. He thinks he's the one in charge. He is actually the one in charge. Uh, but number six was the magic number for Pharaoh. So after six times of not listening to God, six times of hearing the gospel, right? Uh, trust in me. We can, we, can, we, can, we can slightly, not reinterpret the text, but um, Pharaoh is presented with the word of God six times, which I think is more than just about any other person or event in God's word. I, I can't think of them all off the top of my head. But having somebody come and talk to you six times and say basically the same thing, and then there's these powerful signs in between, I don't think anyone else in all of God's word gets as many chances, aside from God's people, um, gets as many chances as Pharaoh. Does. Pharaoh gets the most chances to change his mind, and he doesn't change his mind. He, he's going to get more chances, but from now on, God's like, nope, you've said you don't want to listen to me, 
so you're just not going to listen to me. And that's how we're going to make it. That's what you've said you want. Uh, I am going to give you what you say you want. So let's, let's get there. Sixth plague has an object lesson. Handfuls of soot from the kiln, they become sores uh, throughout all the land of Egypt, but not in the land of Goshen. Here we get the magician talk. Last time in Plague 3, the magician said this is the finger of God. So we get the magicians brought back in the third plague of set 2. There's these kind of repetitions that go on. Now... The Lord hardened, the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he did not listen to them as the Lord had spoken to Moses. So now what God said beforehand is coming true. God said, I will harden Pharaoh's heart. There we go. Boom. It doesn't mean he did it every time. God was making a prediction about a future event. And now that future event has come true. Pharaoh hardens his own heart from plagues zero. Plague zero is the throwing down the staff, the initial let my people go. Plague zero through five. God hardens Pharaoh's heart from here on out. Pharaoh has made it very clear where he stands on this letting of the people go. And so God says, God is basically like, okay, from, from this moment on, you are just a pawn in this I don't want to call it a game. You, you are a character in my story, right? I guess is the way. God's always been the one in charge, but now God's just taking full control of the whole thing. Pharaoh's gotten his input in plague 0 to 5, and so now plague 6 through 10 and into the parting of the Red Sea. God, God is calling all of the shots. Pharaoh doesn't really get a choice anymore. He's had a choice. And it's important for us to realize that. But at this point, Pharaoh doesn't really get, he's already made it clear what he thinks. I, I, I want to try to unravel the, the how we might think that this is unfair of God. That's really my intent in this whole hardening of the heart, is that sometimes we think that it's unfair or that God is unjust or that God is doing something wrong in hardening Pharaoh's heart, God, God is really just doing what Pharaoh said he wanted. And that's, that's our bottom desire with God. We just want God to give us what we say we want. That's, that's our base desire with respect to God. That we don't really care. Now, this is a sinful desire. We don't really care what God thinks. We don't care what God does that is best. We just want him to do what we want. That's our base desire. So God is doing what Pharaoh wants which is our base desire. And yet somehow we think that's unfair. But we would think it would be very fair if God would do what we want. Or wait a minute, maybe that would be unfair too. Hmm, interesting point. Uh, that's it, I guess. The middle three plagues. Pharaoh is still not listening. Things are going to go still fairly badly. We're only halfway through the plagues. Um, we've got 7, 8, 9, and then plague 10, which is sort of all on its own, to go. So we're, we're only about halfway there. Things are, things are going bad for Pharaoh. Things are going badly for the Egyptians. And they're going to... Th things, things go badly when we don't listen to God. Uh, things go better when we do listen to God. If that surprised you, uh, welcome. Hopefully it did not surprise you, though. Anyway, let's pray. Dear Lord God, help us to hear your word. Help us to listen to you and follow you, trusting that what you do is right and good. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, thanks for tuning in. We are going to continue with the final uh, set of three plagues and then the last plague. I know we have a final set and then a last plague. Plague. It's all very confusing. Plague 7, 8, and 9 will be next. And then Plague 10 will follow that. So come back next time. God's peace be with you.